Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is back, and you guys all know what that means, right? We're teaching educational awareness through storytelling and words. That's how Miss Liz serves tea at this house. Uh, I have a surprise tea time today. It is Tuesday. As you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are surprise, rescheduled, or special tea times that have come and got Miss Liz's attention again. So I have the returning guest of Lillian Brumpton here, and she's going to be talking about intentional networking. Uh, we both felt that that was a topic that needed to come to the table, and we want to bring that up. But we also have some different types of teas that we're going to be serving. So we're going to be serving tenacious, environmental, account accountable, knowledge, generous, and responsible or proactive. So that's the type of tea we're going to be serving today along with the intentional networking. So before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel and ring that little doorbell so you can subscribe to Miss Liz's YouTube channel and watch all of these incredible tea times. And you can see Lillian's uh, previous tea time that she had with me in season four. Um, and see the difference in growth and topics and stuff that we talk about. So all of I'll get you all over to that YouTube channel and enjoy those cups of teas over there. So let's get started with the disclaimer and bio. And then let's get Lillian in here and let's spill some tea with you guys and have some fun. So if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, you know how it works. Put it into the comment section of the conversation or send the questions directly to Miss Liz on my Facebook page. And I will get those out to Lillian if they are... Uh, related to the discussion that we're having today. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forth for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forth in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, the original date for tea time is Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a rescheduled surprise or special tea time. And today we have a surprise tea time. So, so now a little bit on my guests. Who is Lillian? Well, Lillian Brumpton is an is an award-winning poet, author, blogger, and entrepreneur celebrated, celebrated for her expertise in networking and marketing. She passionately shares invaluable um, advice to support writers, reviewers, bloggers, and entrepreneurs in their journeys. Lillian encourage, encourages everyone to connect. Feel free to share, like, subscribe, or comment on her blog posts and YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out her books. She always opens, she's always open to an innovative collaboration idea. And we do have one of Lillian's books here because Miss Liz just does that. I get them. So let me get Lillian in here and then we'll show you what book I have. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. So welcome Lillian. Hi, thank you for having me on your show again. This is, I'm so excited to be here. I've been looking forward to it all week. <laughs> right? I always love when my guests come back because then I know that I'm doing something right because they want, they enjoy sharing more tea with me. That's right. And I got iced tea actually today because um, it's a little warm. So I've got my iced tea happening. <laughs> well, that's good. And I also have my cup of tea here that I'm drinking. I'm drinking just a nice warm herbal black tea 
Uh, my throat okay. has a little itch in it, so I'm just doing mm -hmm. a little a little dark tea. Uh, so we are drinking tea, the beverage, but we are serving different teas in the house. <laughs> so Lillian, for all the viewers who didn't see you on last season's show, could you share a little bit about who you are and what you do? And let's start with the little girl first and then who you are today. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, well, I'm originally from the United States. I currently live in the Kootenai region of BC, Canada. Uh, I moved to Canada with my family, my mom and brothers, when I was about seven years old or something like that. So I've been here a good long time, pretty much a Canadian citizen. <laughs> well, I am legally a Canadian citizen, but you know what I mean. It feels like I was born here, but uh, you know, uh, my my previous family life was a little bit unusual. My mom loved nature, and she loved identifying wildflowers and wild crafting and like cooking from scratch and doing all kinds of you know uh, uh, reuse regarding you know, making rag rugs and things like that. She was really into that kind of stuff. So that was a really wholesome environment regarding that. She was also mostly vegetarian just simply because she was, we were poor. <laughs> so most of the time uh, in between husbands, she had five of them, we were on our own. So she had to raise those three kids on her own. She was super proud, never went on welfare, anything like that. So she worked, you know, three jobs if she had to and fed us out of her backyard garden if she had to, but we never went hungry. We always had clothes on her back and shoes on our feet. However, the home life was very tumultuous. So it was, you know, there was a lot of neglect, there was bullying, there was abuse, all out, full out abuse going on in the home at various times. So all of us kids were on our own very, very young. My Both my older brothers were on their own when they were 16. I was on my own before I was 14, put myself through school, paid my own rent. Again, just like my mom, very, very proud. Uh, didn't want to go into foster care or anything like that. So I took care of myself and I I uh, met my husband when I was in my 20s, early 20s, um, and we've been together for 34 years now, something like that. So I haven't followed in my mother's step footsteps other than I have a huge passion for the environment and reuse and repurposing, things like that. Yeah, because that was our conversation when you were on last season was about the homestead, right? Uh, and when we had that conversation, I went out and I actually got one of Lillian and Dave's Yay. books. So we got the cookbook, but this book is so much more than just a cookbook. Um, and I got to look over it over the past couple of months. And I, in the back, what really I love about this book, Lillian, is the non-food. So the non-food recipes. Right. Because, because you know what it has? It has tea mm. recipes. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it what does. really grabbed my attention was the different tea recipes in the homes and like in cleaning stuff and products and stuff like that as well. Right. So, um, yeah. So I really enjoyed that book. And but Lillian, since then, you have a new book that came out. So I want to talk about that yeah. book a little bit. And then we're going to get into what we're what we're going to be talking about. Um, and that new book is called Down the Road, correct? No, Down the Road is going to be coming out in November, just a, a couple of months from now. The one that I think you're talking about is uh, Poetic Wanderings. That book was a collection of Dave's, my husband's father's lifetime collection of poetry. And it's our way of honoring his life by sharing his lifetime collection of poetry in that book. And, um, and it was a huge project. <laughs> huge project of going through file cabinets and printed files and online files and none of it was convertible so I had to do everything try you know type it all in and it was like 300 and some odd poems in that book you know so it was a lot going back and finding an update and redoing the uh poem and stuff and then writing his bio doing a lot of research on his family which was a really interesting project to do 
So that came out uh, just not too long ago. People can find that on Amazon and uh, it's, it's getting some great, some great sales, uh, especially in Canada. So we're really appreciative of the uh, poetry enthusiasts out there. Down the Road is coming out in November, so it is coming out soon. Um, that is actually, again, pertained, uh, focuses on Dave's family, and it's our way of honoring three different generations. So his his grandmother her immigration story from Romania and coming to Canada and marrying a blacksmith and um, someone she hadn't met before, a widow with children and her story. Uh, my husband's father who grew up during the depression, the after effects of the, the world wars and all of the culture shock that that was happening at that time. And then the we also have Dave's uncle, Uncle Tony, who passed recently as well. None of them are with us anymore. And Uncle Tony was, um, he held positions as like a principal for high schools and, and what have you. And eventually he worked himself into the government. And um, the two positions that I know of that he held was he was the environment minister of Canada for a, a uh, a session, a season of, of whatever. I'm not sure what their contract is for. And then uh, he was also the environment minister for Canada for a while. And he was responsible for making, uh, like securing several parks during his, um, his tenure, I think it's called. So I was really, really proud to be able to present his life story. Um, both the, the, both the brothers, uh, Uncle Tony and Dave's dad, um, Frank also uh, lost their father at a very, very young age. And so both of them had to kind of step up and be the men in the family and, you know, go to work at a very young age and try to bring in the money and still go to school and stuff. So their stories were very unique and uh, gives a really um, fascinating aspect, uh, insight into those time frames that I don't think is is so easily attained hearing it from their personal story their personal voice uh their emotions that they went through their most important memories that they shared in their memoirs and in their writings that we were able to put out in this book so it's uh yeah it's a collection of their memoirs and obviously i'm very proud to have it come out in um, november hey. You know, and, and through our last conversation on last season and this season, uh, you know, planting the seeds of legacy was something mm -hmm. that's really been important to you and Dave, right? And that's how you created the Brompton Media Group as well, uh, you know, because you wanted to help and plant seeds out there in the network and marketing world as well. So could you tell us a little bit about the Brompton Media Group? You're right. It's a huge passion for us. We we decided that uh, as entrepreneurs, we have an opportunity to create positive change. So we looked at every aspect of our business. What are our skills? What are the services that we're going to be offering? And how can we slant them in such a way that we're leaving a positive mark at the end of the day? So for writing, we might encourage other writers by, you know, uh, writing a review for their book. We might um, feature them on our blog for an interview to help support the world of writing. We might have nonprofits on our blog to support the nonprofit industries. You know, there's various things that we can do in our business as well. You know, we can network with local community organizations. And if they're going to have a fundraiser, a silent auction, if they're having any kind of event or project, is there some way we can get behind that or encourage? encourage our staff to get behind it, or maybe we could collaborate with our connections and get them involved as well. So there's so many things that we can do as a business. So that was really our focus. We wanted to make a positive difference, leave a positive legacy to feel like our life mattered, that there's reason why we exist, and also to encourage others to do likewise, you know, to continue on their journey, but also to accelerate and better that journey by giving them the advice, the resources, sharing the stories of others that are, you know, within the realm that they're in. So it's a fun thing to do. Um, I have to say writing has been like stepping into an, uh, an ongoing university 
for <laughs> for the last 20 some odd years. I mean, it's just ongoing. It never ends. It's ever changing. It's ever evolving. But also there's so many different tributaries from that ocean of writing, the genre of writing that we can explore as writers. And sometimes there's almost too many choices because we want to do everything. So you have to sort of pick one and, and give it a try for a while until you start reading, reaching burnout and then try something else. And so, um, yeah, I love I love the world of writing. Yeah, and writing is leaving a legacy, right? Because it's on the pen and paper. Mm -hmm. It's it's being published in books and uh, articles and uh, blogs and all that as well. You do an incredible mm -hmm. job with the blogging, uh, Lillian. So okay. do you want to share a little bit about the blogging on how people can connect with you for blogging? Sure, yes. Um, so as an entrepreneur, you need to have uh, ways of communicating about your business out there. And for some people, it might be a podcast. For another person, it might be their their newsletter or their e-bulletin or, you know, it, there's lots of different ways of getting that message out there. For us, we use our two blogs and our YouTube channel to support all the writings and the various services and activities that we offer as Bremit Media. So, um, the main blog, which is the most popular uh, media that we have out, is is Bremit's Conscious Blog. And it's been around for uh, 20 some odd years. <laughs> I can't remember exactly how many. I, I just wrote an article about it not too long ago celebrating it. You'd think I would remember right now, but it's over 20 years that we've been running that blog. And uh, initially, the first 18 years or so, it was a daily blog. And then about, well, about uh, five, six years ago, we revamped it and we slowed it down a little bit so that I could put more of my energies into other activities. But it is published every two to three days. So there's new content there every two to three days. We tend to have about um, uh, around 20,000 views a month as a mean average. So... Lillian, we have a question here. What is the e bulletin? Mm -hmm. Okay, so an e bulletin, um, it's very similar to like an e newsletter. Uh, it's where you have an e bulletin would be your clients. Let's say you have a dry cleaning business and your clients, you have their emails, and maybe you're running a special on this Thursday and you want to remind them this special is coming up. So that would be your e bulletin. You would send out your email. Uh, occasionally out to that person. An e-newsletter is similar, only it's more scheduled. It's more regularly published. It's every two weeks, it's every month, it's every two months, whatever your schedule it is, but you stick to it. You choose it, you stick to it. It goes out on the Thursday, the first Thursday of every month, and that's your day that the, it goes out. So consistency is the key with your newsletter. E-bulletins, a little more casual, more like announcements that you're sending out over your email uh, list. So it's more like a highlights, right? Kind of like a bulletin highlight? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So... Lillian, we talked about this before we went back and forth, and we wanted to find a conversation that we felt that needed to be out there. And we, you, know, you came up with the title Intentional Networking. So mm -hmm. can you tell the listeners what intentional networking is about? Okay, so uh, for me, being conscious, being conscious about what your impact is going to be with each action that you're going to have, and then creating a plan, an action plan to make that happen. So when it comes to networking, we want to go at it very intentionally with intent. So that means like, we're going to say, uh, first of all, we need to be aware that the networking is going to involve time behind the scenes, especially when you first start, because you're learning, you're learning, you're lear you know, you're just starting out the gate, it's going to take a little while, eventually, you'll smooth out the, the rough edges, and you'll get it down to a, a much more compact amount of time from your schedule. But initially, you're going to need to clear some time for that. Um, you need to be able to take some like thought time, really think about 
before you go rushing out and sending something out that might be considered a spam that might overwhelm someone or underwhelm them, they might feel like, hey, I have to work too hard to figure out what the heck they're talking about. They're confused. They give up and it jeopardizes your whole, all the energy, all the planning that you did. So stepping back and really thinking about it first is, is like really important. So um, the sec the next thing I want to say is your mindset when you go into networking, your intent should be long-term networking relationships that you're developing. So rather than just going in and saying, hey, I'm having a sale on Sunday um, to a retailer that works in a store right beside you, and maybe you guys aren't even in the same genre, uh, you don't even serve the same clients, but maybe you could have the sale on the same day and you can both announce it to your various contacts. You can do like, you can collaborate on an ad in the newspaper or whatever to get the information out there and then encourage the people that come to your store to go to the other person and they do the same thing. Everybody benefits because they get the discounts. So this is how you develop those relationships. So instead of just saying, I'm going to do this one thing right now, and that's it. I'm washing my hands of that person, and I'm going to look for another cold contact to start networking with. So you want to find that balance where you're also nurturing the relationships you've already created because you want them to continue over a very, very long period of time. You may not do an event or a networking activity with them every single year or every single month, but you want them in your list. You want to be able to reach out to them when it's appropriate to you know, uh, approach them with a new idea. So the, one of the things that you can do to help like you to, to refine this is to do some brainstorming sessions with your friends, your colleagues, your supporters of your business, uh, your staff, if you have them, your partner, if you have it, uh, to help you come up with some ideas. How can we maybe network with people? What are some ideas that we can toss around? What are we doing already in our business activities or that we have planned coming up in the future that maybe we can tweak just enough that we can open it up for networking opportunities. Um, also, you is there a way that maybe you can create a page on your website or somewhere that you, maybe a page on your blog or something like that, where you can offer a list of current networking ideas, networking opportunities that you really want to pursue and, and are able to pursue right now. You could have a list of those there for them. And then below that, a list of some potential reciprocation ideas. What do you want from them? What are you hoping for them to do in exchange? And so by re being able to refer them to that page, it just refines everything. If they have any questions or like, what do you mean by networking? They can go there and find all that out. Also, uh, you want to look at like your procedures, your current campaigns. And before you start out on any campaign that you've chosen, think about like um, how your communication is going to reflect your brand, brand, the wording, the keywords you're going to use, your design, your logos, your links, your, your signature, everything that you're using to communicate with that uh contact that you're going to be reaching out to should reflect your brand, right? You want them to, to always be very clear about who you are and who you appear to be needs to be consistent with everything that you do. And so uh, keep things very crisp, keep things very clear, use bullets. If you have to use commas in a sentence, put it in bullets. It makes it easier for the reader to digest what you're trying to say in a very compact, quick, they can scan it, understand what they're what you're saying and get back to you. If it's wordy, blah, 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 they're going to go, oh, I can't deal with this right now. And they might never come back and read your email, even if they save it for later. So those are some tips to get you started with how you approach your networking with intent. Um, it goes a little deeper than that, but those are the basic, you know, you must do's. Well, and the thing that I found mm -hmm. about intentional networking is building a relationship, right? And finding the purpose behind it. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, not just that one time opportunity, it's the building the relationship. And that's one thing that me and you talked about is, in today's society with networking, we're not building the relationship. We're just knocking on doors and saying, hey, here's, here's my product. Here's my thing. Just buy it. We're not mm -hmm. taking the time to build that relationship. And that's why we wanted to bring this conversation to the table. You know, it's about seeking individuals who align with the professional goals and resonate with your values and passions. It's about the quality conversations, not just quantity of contacts, 
um, you know, it, it means that we're taking the time to get to know who we're collaborating with and who we're working with and guarding our, our businesses and brands as well with, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, we have a question think, here. Go ahead. We have a question here about cold calling. Uh, mm -hmm. What is that, Lillian, for the listeners out there? Okay, so call? a cold call is basically knocking on a door, so to speak, that you haven't been to yet. You're walking down a neighborhood street, and maybe you know some of those houses. You know the people in those houses. And so knocking on those doors is a warm knock. You're, you've already been there. They know you. They know your name. They're likely to open the door and not just peek through the hole and shout, who are you? What do you want? You know. So a cold call is when you're knocking on a door that hasn't, uh, hasn't announced a... Uh, come hither. They haven't sent out some sort of notice saying, hey, I'm I'm interested in meeting people such and such. Come meet me at my email or reach out to me. They haven't done that invite. And so you're going there uninvited, knocking on that door saying, hi, I'd love to sell you this vacuum, right? So how you go about that is so very important. Now, a cool one, a cool uh, a, a submission or approach or what have you is really someone who has put out an invite. Hey, I'm really looking for some networking contacts. I'm looking actually for a mentor. Do you have any advice about this, that, or the other thing? And that is an invite. Now you can reach out to them. You can offer your expertise, your thoughts, your skills, your resources. You can connect them with another contact and you can be the person that makes that connection. And so they continually, over the years that they know you and get to know you deeper, you're continually thinking of them. Gee, I just met someone that I think that this other person in my contact list could really benefit from knowing and maybe they can get together or collaborate in some way. I'm going to introduce them. Joe, meet Judith in an email, copying everybody's emails, you know, feel free to connect and network with each other, whatever. So as long as you're the person that gets, that passes that on, you know. So um, when you're like thinking about approaching a, a, a cold, you haven't approached somebody yet. You're looking at it from the standpoint of selflessly offering something rather than coming in and saying, what can they do for me? And I want that and this, that, and the other thing. And maybe I'll follow through with one or two things that I can offer in exchange. No, you're coming into it more with what can I offer first? I want them to want to work with me. I want them to want to keep me on their contact list. And I want them to refer me to others. So I need to appear as an expert in my field. So if I can refer them to someone, if I can offer a resource, if I can share their name in my ad, if I can um, say, hey, I got some great advice from so-and-so during an interview, name them, drop and do that name drop, and then let them know you did that name drop. You know, Can you partner with them in some way? Or if they're doing a sale, can I announce that? in my newsletter or can I maybe mention their business in my newsletter and they can mention my business in their newsletter and you know their subscribers will now know more about me and maybe check out my website so there's things that we can do maybe we, our staff have decided that they really want to participate in this community event let's say a school is starting to uh, put in a, a garden, a vegetable garden for their class. They need some volunteers to come help, you know, dig the dirt and stuff like that. Some of your staff says, yeah, let's all do this. Let's do this together as a team. Cool. Get involved. Be there. Do that. Get those press releases out there. Make sure people know about it. Take the pictures, you know, talk about it on your newsletters, on your website. But beyond that, why can't we invite some of our contacts? Hey, I got a, you know, this activity that's going on. It sounds like a great deal of fun. Do any of your staff or yourself want to get involved in this? If you don't want to get involved in it, maybe you could tell other people about it and draw some more volunteers to this project. And in doing so, everybody's collaborating and getting involved. It's not just about trying to get sales or trying to get, you know, media exposure or whatever. It's how can we work together? And we want to nurture those relationships over a long period of time. So how do you do that? You keep records. 
So what I do is I use, I'm old school, I use Excel. So I have a simple spreadsheet with like four columns. That's all it is. Each row has like the date for that year. Uh, say I reached out uh, May 31st that year. So that would be my date. And then, uh, you know, Liz is my contact and this is her website and this is her contact information. Then on my final column is just going to have brief notes, really, really brief notes because they can get quite wordy, right? So I'll just say we met uh, through a networking event in 1998. Uh, I've appeared on her blog on this date. She appeared on my radio show on that date. Um, I don't have to have all the links, all the information there. All I need is just brief brief. So when I go back and I'm going to reach out to that person again, I can, I know exactly where I met them, what type of collaborations we had, what we last talked about. And if there was anything that we, we talked about that maybe I can follow up on now. So I'll do my follow-ups typically annually. So it doesn't necessarily have to fall in February. It doesn't necessarily have to fall in August when it's appropriate in my schedule to take on that activity, I'll bring up my contact list and I'll start reaching out to every single contact on that list that I've had successful networking relationships with and that they have expressed interest in continuing to network. And so I'll just reach out, hey, how's it going? If I have nothing to offer, I'll just, how's it going? I'd love to hear about what you're, what you're doing and, you know, to reconnect with you. And even if I have nothing to offer right now or any project or campaign. So it's just important to make sure we touch base and they always remember our name. Well, and, and, and as you're, as you're sharing all of this information, Lillian, it's building the community, right? Getting people connected mm -hmm. and collaborating and, you know, like shout outs and, and getting cross promotion, uh, you know, is building the relationship because you're not only one sided relationship because if you're just looking for content and creations and stuff like that, but you're not willing to go the, the other way, then, you know, that's kind of like a cold call for me. Right. You know, I, and it's I a, don't, it's a good, right. Yeah. And I don't do well with cold calling. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, like what <laughs> you want me to do yeah. all the work, but you don't want, like, there's no 50, 50. Right. Um, yeah. Where when we Those people are kind of seen like as takers in the industry. Yes. That's the, the common term for them now is takers. It's basically they're coming in with gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah. And, and not coming in with saying, season. hey, I've got something for you. Yeah. Yeah. And last season we talked about this, Lillian, because of the gardens, right? You and Dave have these right. incredible gardens where you were living because you and you relocated since then. But yeah. I mean, you had these beautiful gardens that the community got to enjoy that you got many awards for in that as well, but you were planting different seeds. You were planting different vegetables, different flowers and stuff like that. And what we're saying with intentional networking is we're planting seeds mm -hmm. in different flavors and blends that we want to build the relationship with you. We want to know how we can help you. What potential can we both grow from, right? If you need right. some water from Lillian and you need some soil from Miss Liz, we plant a beautiful garden and we create a beautiful network. And that's what we're trying to bring to the table is bringing the building that relationship and taking the time to warm it up a bit, you know, because you yes. went from cold to cool to warm, you know, and that's what temperature is. That's what the relationships are, is all of those yes. temperatures as well, right? Yeah. And you might come up with like, say during your brainstorm session, you might come up with like 30 different possible networking ideas. So space those out, you know, approach each idea at the appropriate time with the appropriate networking contact so that you have diverse things happening all the time over a long period of time. So, you know, you might, um, one year you might partner with them on a sale. The next year you might partner with them in a volunteer activity. The next time you might uh, participate in a community fundraiser, maybe you're going to like exchange coupons or maybe you're going to create like a, an online bulletin board, um, which kind of really acts like the old fashioned cork board. Sometimes they even make them to look like an old-fashioned corkboard. And they this is where you're basically listing recommended resources. And those recommended resources can, can be from your contact list. Recommended local businesses that, you know, I recommend to my 
to my clients because you've worked with them, you've purchased from them, and you feel confident in recommending them to people. So you could just have that on your website, and that can be a networking tool. Your blog can be a networking tool, right? Um, referencing them uh, whenever you can. Um, maybe you can be a mentor at one point and they can be a mentor to you. Um, maybe they can just be like a shoulder to cry on when times are tough and they're there for you in that way. Maybe um, you can uh, offer special discounts to their staff. Like say there's a, a big business in town and you want to try to draw some of those clients to your, your soup uh, cafe. And so you can go to that place and say, look, everybody here for the month of September gets so much of a discount in this building. And all they have to do is tell me they work at this building, what office or some sort of, you know, proof that they work there and or use this co code, coupon code or something like that specifically for that building. And for this month only, they get 10 percent off of any meals that they buy at my lunch cafe. And so there's ways of going in and, and just offering, offering, offering until you start developing these relationships, these strong relationships. So how do you go about finding these? Well, they could be your neighbors. They could be a retailer right next to you. But if you're like me and Liz and you're working from your home, there's no next door. <laughs> there's no, there's no, you know, local physical community. So you, you end up going online, you meeting people, you go to like social events, um, both on and offline. You'll go to like networking events on and offline within your genre or within your local community. Uh, like your chamber of commerce hosts all kinds of events, toaster masters hold all mm -hmm. kinds of events. Um, you can go through what I would suggest is first thing, go through your junk drawer, all your drawers, all your cabinets, your purse, what have you. Look for all those business cards that you've been collecting all these years and find a way to reach out to them. Even if it was the gas guy who came to repair your tank and you're saying to him, look, you know, I really enjoyed your service. I kept your card because I knew I was going to be referring your business in the future or possibly using your business in the future. I wanted to reach out and reconnect and let you know I really appreciated your services. Hey, by the way, I'm starting this new business and this is my new service. And if you know anyone that's interested, right? So you can connect with people and get the word of mouth happening in all kinds of different ways. Your personal address book, your contact list, your friends connections and your socials. Don't forget those, but then think about friend, a friend of a friend. So maybe your uncle's daughter's teacher is someone who is interested in something that you're doing. So you, you can, Go beyond just your personal circles, but start there and start doing concentric circles, you know, beyond that, growing those circles and growing them, start attending events, you know, and, and spreading out your wings from there. So just start small from your yeah. junk drawer and work out from there. And Lillian, a few years ago, I went to a networking event and everybody told me bring three cards per person because you want to have a card for the person that you're giving it to, a friend of theirs and a recommendation that they might want to recommend your business by having an open conversation with the elevator pitches, right? And have a real good elevator Absolutely. pitch when you're meeting people with the networking, right? And don't be scared to be different and, and right. open that door, right? Uh, like, Absolutely. what do you bring to the table? Like, Miss Liz brings tea, but I don't bring a beverage. I bring storytelling and words. You know, yeah. really practice those uh, elevator pitchers, uh, pitches as well. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Now, good thing with the cards yeah. is if, like, we always try to recommend people use all the space, but leave white space. So use your backside, use the reverse side. Don't forget to use both sides. But for networking events, sometimes it's easier if you leave a portion or all of the backside of your business card blank, because now you can write on that before you give it to John that you just met. You can say, um, uh, Miss Liz will get back to you on Tuesday about the basketball coach my daughter is benefiting from that I told you about in the networking event. Perhaps during the discussion, it something like that comes up random. And you're like, oh, I know somebody that would be great that could help you with your child's basketball issues. And so you write that on the card and then you write another card to yourself 
um, if you've gotten his card, especially right on the back of his card and say, um, get back to John on Tuesday about my basketball recommendation or whatever. So this way, when he looks gets home and he pulls out 5,000 business cards that he just got and all this other, you know, chotch keys and all these other things that he's pulling out of his pocket from the networking event. Half the time he met so many people that he doesn't even remember hardly any of them unless they really stood out because, you know, their hair was funky or something and, and they stood out to them in their memory. So when he pulls out your card, though, there's a note there that tells him, oh, yeah, I remember talking to that person. And then when they hear from you, they'll remember, right? So yeah. it'll be crisp and clear in their mind. And, and that's a really good tip. And it's also a great way of... So you don't like when you leave, you're thinking, oh, all those people. And I was going to write down all these things. And now I've forgotten half of them. And some people will have like book books in their purse or something like that. They'll go to the washroom and just quickly write everything down that they just, you know, thought of or heard of or whatever. But I find those cards are so much helpful, more helpful for me. I just jot down little bullet notes because for me, I just need prompts. And then when I get home, I know exactly what I wanted to say to that person, propose to that person, ideas that I had. After the conversation, I'm sitting there waiting for a speaker to come up and all of a sudden some ideas pop off in my head. I can look for John's card and make a note about something then and there. And then I can follow up on it when I get home without losing track of things. Well, and that little bullet is that personal touch, right? It's adding that yeah. moment for that individual. You know, instead of just saying, here's my card, you're actually having that conversation and you know, little brief little, it's like a, like a postcard, right? You're just doing a little short sentence or yeah. a little, a little keynote or something. Right. And then you're reaching out to that person. And that also makes a huge difference when you're networking because you're taking that personal time to engage with that person. Absolutely. And thank you notes, believe it or not. Thank you notes. I know they're old school, but they're coming back. And when you do get one, it is so memorable. Like, I don't know, Liz, if you've gotten them from your guests, but when I was running my radio show, I would get, you know, feedback, written feedback from people. They would mail me a thank you card. They would mail me a gift. They would, they would email a thank you card, various ways of them expressing their gratitude. And wow, you know, I mean, those stood out among the many, many other people that were a part of the show. So why not stand out? Like, how can you stand out? How can you be different? You know? Yeah. Well, even thank you cards, there's different ways of saying thank you, right? And appreciation to you, like a podcast host, you know, supporting right. your guests. So if they have a book or they have a program, you know, word of mouth goes a long way or, or buying a copy of that book and, and, you know, leaving a review that goes a long way. You know, uh, the little, t little things make a big difference in the network and networking uh, world, you know, in business world as well. And Lillian and me, we're heart to heart girls. And we really want to make it that, you know, we're, we're here to build relationships. You know, we're not here to build just content. We're here to build that relationship where if you need somebody to talk to, you can reach out to us and say, you know what, I don't know how my business is going right now. Can you give me some feedback? Because sometimes feedback is what we need as well you know, mm -hmm. in order to switch things, uh, because we're so stuck in our ways sometimes that sometimes it gets stagnant, right? It gets stale. It gets like a st really stale cup of tea. And, you know, <sighs> you got to take that tea bag out and you have to say, oh, let me see if I reach out to somebody and somebody can help me, you know? And one thing that's really worked for me, Lillian, is an accountability person saying, okay, Miss mm -hmm. Liz, you've said this. Now, where, where's the work? Where's the results? Right. And that oh, doesn't that you is tell so all true. social media. You you have that one person and that yeah. one person is calling you out on it and saying, hey, you said yes. by Friday you would have this done. And it's Tuesday the next week. Where, where, where are you going with this girl? You know, that yes. has helped me oh. a lot. Being a part of a group or just having that one person that you meet with on a regular basis can make that huge difference. Um, I, I've a few different writers groups, but the one activity that I find the most helpful is I meet with Phyllis Ch uh, Chubb, who's another uh, writer, and she and I just meet casually. We're not there to do anything, you know, marketing wise or anything like that, but we meet every single Monday and it, as long as it fits our schedules. 
and um, we just support each other. We talk about what we're doing that week. And because of that, even though she doesn't say, oh, did you finish what you said you were going to do? She doesn't do that. But I feel compelled. I'm like, oh, crap, Monday's coming up. I said I was going to do such and such. I really want to get at least a start on that before I meet with Phyllis, because I don't want to be hanging my head and saying, I didn't get to it again this week, right? So yeah. it kind of holds you to, like you say, accountability by having a support system in place as well. But just having someone to just say, oh, boo-hoo me, I'm feeling about this thing. And she goes, I know, me too. And, you know, just having that uh, support in that way can be very, very helpful. Absolutely. And it goes right into your tea, uh, Lillian, because I want to get into the tea that you gave me because okay. you gave me the first tea you sent me was knowledge, mm -hmm. generous and responsible or proactive. And that's exactly what we're doing, right, is having that accountability right. person and being active, you know, uh, being in the moment. But we're being generous with ourselves as well, because we're, we're taking the feedback as not personal, but as a growth part. Uh, so tell mm -hmm. me why you gave me those three words, because I know why you gave me the words, but I want you to tell me why you gave me those words. Well, because I think to me, you know, that's, well, that's what we try to do, you know, in our business, whether it's in the drum studio, uh, helping students, you know, accelerate and grow as musicians, uh, helping music teachers accelerate and grow as teachers, or uh, uh, repairing instruments that people couldn't formally play before because they were broken pieces. And now there's something out there, you know, creating joy in the world and giving them joy. These are, these are beautiful things to be doing, to impart that knowledge, to clutch knowledge and keep it to your chest and be like, no, this is mine. I worked hard for this. I developed this. These are my skills, my knowledge. That doesn't work for me. Um, and it never has worked for me as a person. I know when I first started out in, in business, in the world of business, that's exactly what the uh, more mature adults of were advising me back then they were saying don't give away so much you give away too much you know you got to be careful what you're doing and all of this yes to a point you know yes. but things have evolved and changed now where it's you know if you want to succeed over a long period of time you've got to do so with your arms wide open and with a really giving and collaborative nature um, you can't go into it with this uh, selfish me 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 what am I going to get out of it this is mine this is mine my territory mine everybody back off you know or what do you want from me with your fists yeah. already balled up you know you have to open up your arms and be more willing to to um to be collaborative. Yeah. Well, and as a leader as well, right? You have to have that open mind of understanding and learning from others, you know, because if you go into a room and you're just like, I know everything, well, <laughs> you're not going to really network really well with the rest of the people because they're going to be like, well, if you know everything, you don't need us, right? You, you right. already <laughs> shut the mind down. You don't want to collaborate. You don't want to connect. You don't, because you all, you have all the answers. And I myself, I'm like that, Lillian, I don't do well with that because in today's society, no matter how old you are, we can all learn from someone, you know, mm -hmm. we can all get different pointers and different bullets and, and, and get out there and understand that sometimes the way that we're doing it is not the right way. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to just twist it a bit, right? Make it like a twisted tea, you know, like when you make le a lemonade and that you got to twist that lemon sometimes and it's got to get bitter and it's got to get sour a bit and you got to get uncomfortable because in the business world, you have to be uncomfortable, because if you're com if you're comfortable, you're not growing. You're 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 gonna you're eventually gonna get bored. You're gonna say, oh well, I don't know. Maybe I'll just close the business. I've been doing it for twenty years. That's enough. You know, uh, you have to keep that openness. Uh, the well, second yeah, when you when you lose enthusiasm for what you're doing, passion for what you're doing, it is it bleeds into how other people then perceive you as well. 
You know, yeah. if you're excited and you keep it fresh and you keep changing and tweaking and, uh, you know, you're in this river and now you're in this creek and now it's a tiny little tributary and it's, you know, you don't have as much water to run your canoe on or whatever. And now there's this obstacle in the way and maybe you have to put the canoe on your back and climb over the obstacle and put the canoe back in the water. And, you know, there's things that we have to do in our career. You ebb and flow. You got to be flexible. What's coming up? You weren't expecting this mass of challenge that just landed on your plate. Now you have to deal with it. Instead of thinking of it as this great big mountain to climb, you know, we can look at it in an excited way. Like we get to expand, we get to grow, we get to understand our knowledge base, you know, grow our knowledge base and understand a bigger part of the picture. And by gaining those experiences and learning how to navigate things that hit your path, that you weren't expecting can can really create this flexibility in things. Like for me, I, I'm kind of anal about having my plans. I have my plans, I have my business plans, they're five-year plans and I break it down to a year and that year is broken down to a month. And so I have a basic idea of little steps that I know I can potentially finish within that time period, they don't always, but you know. And, uh, you know, and it gives me this map to follow. I know that I'm heading there and these are the steps that I'm taking to get there. But at the same time, if something interrupts that, I have to be okay with that. I can't beat myself up. I can't have insomnia for two weeks because I, you know, this other project is still nagging at me while I'm, I'm dealing with this other thing, you know, some are, are because our business services vary so much. It's a lot of ebb and flow. So sometimes one month we'll get like 15 drum repairs, bang, you know, all these drum repairs, one right after the other. And so we have to set other things aside so we can focus on, you know, this. And so, you know, we've developed a way of managing that ebb and flow and having a bit of a contingency plan, you know, planning ahead. Uh, for instance, I might be writing, I might be scheduling on my blog three, four months in advance, but that also gives me a buffer. If something challenges my schedule during that three or four months, I don't have to worry about, oh gosh, I don't have any new content coming out on the blog because I haven't schedule it in advance. I've given myself that buffer, that time frame to go ahead and deal with whatever challenges and then get back to the, you know, blog content when I need to. And it, and it goes into uh, your second cup of tea that you gave me because your second cup of tea is tenacious, environmental yeah. and accountable, account, uh, accountable. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what you're saying, right? Is we have, Sometimes we need that break. We need that, that flow in the water. You know, we hit a Creek and it goes to the left instead of the right, but we have our backup, right? We have that plan B that's already ready. You have your blogs already up for three months in, in case something happens in that three months, you know, and, and, and that's where the ten tenacity comes in because you keep flowing, you keep going, you know? Um, so why'd you give me those? It's, it's kind of like being committed to your marriage, you know, right? either you're, <laughs> You, you commit to your, your your marriage without divorce in the back of your mind. Oh, well, I can always get divorced. All right. You know, I have this special hidden savings account so that if anything goes wrong, I've gotten out. I'm out. Is that really committed to your marriage? You know, so uh, obviously if you're in a difficult marriage, that's a different thing. But I'm just talking like if you're heading into and you're newly married and you're committing to this marriage, but you've already got this backup plan. You know, I can get out anytime I want to. So being an entrepreneur, you kind of go into it like that. You're committed to this. No matter what, you're going to find a way to find your niche and make a living out of it. You know, maybe I've got to go off to this side a little bit because that's where the income is this year. And next year, maybe I can go back to what I was heading to, you know, before because now that I can see that there's an opening in the market over there. So we kind of have to just be willing to do the work, but also be very committed. Like tenacious to me means you're going to just do it no matter what. You're going to find a way to make this work. And, and, and you're talking about the environmental, you know, a lot of your work is done with the environment that you're around, right? The surroundings that you're around, the gardening, the, the writing, the promoting and marketing, networking and all of that. So what what is it about the environmental that why you put, pick that word for, Lillian? 
environment is, I think, a passion of mine that I've never been able to let go, but in a positive way. I've never been okay with like doom and gloom. Oh, all these things are terrible. All these issues. Oh, look at what so-and-so is doing, pointing fingers over there and those people. I'm more of like, what can I do and, and do it in a positive way? If I'm going to, uh, when I was doing uh, freelance work, I would write for uh, publications that encouraged like ecotourism or alternative agriculture or green energy or uh, reducing waste or, uh, you know, helping people develop their business because all these ideas are out there that are that could be very viable, but they become afraid and overwhelmed by the world of business. They become they're not prepared, and so in doing that, they 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 fail before they even begin. But if we can educate them and inspire them, then there's all these people out there with these incredible tools and skills that they can offer the world and create positive change in that way. So there's. It depends on how you look at your business and what your services are, but you can do that. You can look at your in-house policies. How am I purchasing? Who am I purchasing from? Is that someone I would want to call my friend, someone I believe in what they do and how they run their business, and therefore I'm supporting them because of that? Can I celebrate what they're doing in some way so that other people are aware of this? And that also I care about these things. So it's about my branding. I want people to know that I care about the environment. You know, we get involved with all kinds of local uh, fundraising events like, you know, silent auctions and stuff with nonprofits. And that's a great way for authors to, you know, get known locally without spending a lot of money. It's the cost of the book, your cost of the book. And so really, that's all it is, maybe some shipping, maybe a poster, but most of the time, it's just supplying the one product or a gift certificate to one of our services. Or, you know, maybe we have extra drums that Dave, uh, you know, is able to donate to a certain event. So there's things that we can do that helps get the word out, but is also contributing to positive things. And so what can we do where we are with what we have now to make a difference. And it might just be starting by just looking at your in-house policies. Start with that. You know, are you maximizing your recycling and reuse and repurposing? Are you purchasing, you know, what are your purchasing habits? You can just start right there and start doing concentric circles from there, you know, start small, but then look at bigger things. How else can I get involved with what's going on around me in one way or another? And, and, and it, it's important that we have these uh, tools, you know, and these uh, this information out there, because I think that we can make a difference with the world if we start sharing our resources and our, uh, you know, our ups and downs as well, because it, it opens up to somebody coming in and saying, well, you know what, I have this source or this business or or this service that can help you to increase that. Right. Uh, so Lillian, your last word for your second T is accountable. Tell me why mm -hmm. you gave me that word accountable. This is a pressure that I feel really heavy on my shoulders. It's like a responsible, I'm responsible. I feel the responsibility. So, so it kind of goes like this. So we become conscious that every moment we're having an impact and that we have the ability to choose what that impact is going to be. With that comes awareness, right? Awareness means, okay, now we know what are we going to do with that, right? The responsibility comes in really heavy with that knowledge because you always feel like you have, you have to do something, you know? Yeah. And um, there can be a really good side about that, but it can also sometimes be, uh, an overwhelming and um, a wearing thing. Yeah. So I've had to try to find that balance where I'm able to feel like uh, I'm enough. What I'm doing is enough at that moment in time on that day. You know, I can't expect myself to be a hundred percent every single day. And so probably most days I'm not. 
So, uh, you know, I give myself that break because otherwise we tend to think like, oh, we didn't do enough. You know, we're not big enough. We're not strong enough. We didn't donate enough. We didn't, you know, what we did was such a tiny thing. How can we possibly celebrate that with our clients? It's such a little thing. Why would we want to do that? Of course you want to do that. For one thing, by telling other people what we're doing, you know, as a business or as a person, an individual person, we're inspiring all the people around us. You know, you inspire by doing. Yeah. But the more that we share what we're doing, the more people that we can inspire and maybe get more and more you know, wonderful things happening in the world just by doing, just by sharing. Absolutely. So Lillian, if anybody wanted to reach out to you or connect with you, what's the best place to connect with you? Well, you know, uh, I would say probably Facebook or LinkedIn. You can just message me there, you know, once you've uh, connected with me there. Um, I'm on a lot of different socials. So pretty much, you know, just go online on on Google or whatever and do a, a search for Lillian and Dave Bremet or Lillian Bremet, B-R-U-M-M-E-T, and you'll find a lot of different uh, contact information there, ways of reaching out. Our blog, Conscious Discussions, is uh, consciousdiscussions.blogspot.com. So I hope people will check out that as well. If you visit the About page, you'll see our contact information is available there, as well as uh, you know submission information, query information, and networking information is available on that blog. So I encourage people to check that out for sure. Um, of course, we'd love for people to check out our books on Amazon. So whatever country you're in, uh, .com, .ca, .co, UK, what have you, uh, visit that Amazon um, site and just look up Lillian and Dave Brummett, B-R-U-M-M-E-T, and you'll find all seven of our current books there. And the three that are coming up in the next few months, which I'm really excited about. We've got one coming out in November. We've got another one planned for like February, and we're hoping to have the third book coming out probably around the end of summer, maybe mid-summer 2025. So a lot of stuff is coming up in the publication schedule. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me again on Tea Time. It's always a pleasure having my guests come back because I, I get to dig a little deeper, right? And I learn so much from my guests. So thank you again, Lillian, for joining me and sharing a double cup of tea today and some <laughs> really good information and tools and tips that we all the listeners out there, I hope that you take them to heart. And if you'd like to connect with us, uh, you can connect uh, with Lillian or myself, Miss Liz. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Tammy Faye, who was also a Tea Time guest um, uh, in season one. And she has Calm Your Monster down. And she has also a new channel where she does tarot reading cards. Uh, so check out her YouTube channels for that as well. So thank you, Tammy, for that. I want to thank all the listeners on Instagram who have come and supported Miss List today. So I have seen your... Um, your names in that as well. So I want to give you a couple of shout outs here. Uh, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, you know, keep sharing these tea times and getting them out because that's what these tea times are. It's uh, a, another form of networking uh, to get the information out there, the tools out there and that as well. Uh, I Miss Liz will be back on Thursday with two more TEAs to join me. And we'll be talking with Daphne, my Sacred Hearts Rising Sister from Edmonton. Uh, she'll be sharing her book called You Do You. And then we have Jolie Interreddy. I think I'm saying it right. Uh, she'll be on for author and illustrator. So a, a lot of cool topics coming up. And if you'd like to know more about the, any of the other guests that are on Tea Time in September, just check out Miss Liz's uh, website and uh, social medias for that as well. But again, Lillian, thank you so much. And what final message do you have for everybody out there today? Never feel like you're too small to follow your dreams and your passions. You don't know what kind of impact that you could have along the way that could change it could change the world one person at a time, the influence that you could have. Just be aware that you are having an, amp uh, an impact with every moment that, uh, that is in your life. Every second that goes by, that was a moment and you had an impact. So how is that impact going to be in the future? Are you making a conscious choice about that? That's what I would like to leave you with. 
Well, again, thank you so much to Leanne and we will stay in touch and we will see where this relationship takes us because there's many doors that will be opening with Miss Liz in 2025 with many of my guests. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll see you again on Thursday, same time, same place. And we'll do this all over again. Until then, keep serving your tea and keep being true to your purpose in life.